Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about number five from the 2021 Calc AB exam, and it is an implicit differentiation problem, which I always like those. They're always a little weird. Um, so we're given that 2y squared minus 6 equals y times sine of x, and it's actually going to be really important in this problem. Y is greater than zero. That's going to come up in a couple of places. Part A, show that dy dx is equal to y times cosine of x over 4y minus sine of x. So we just have to get this. So what I'm going to do is use implicit. So derivative with respect to x of both sides of this thing. Don't forget the derivative of a constant is 0. And don't forget the derivative of y is dy dx. So a lot of chain rule. All right, here we go. So the derivative of 2y squared is going to be 4y, but by the chain rule, times dy dx. The derivative of negative 6 is 0. So equals, this is a product, so it's going to be first, derivative of the second is cosine, plus second, which is sine, times derivative of the first. The derivative of y is dy dx. So we get this. Now we just need to solve for dy dx. I'm going to take sine of x times dy dx and subtract it from both sides, and then I'm also going to factor dy dx out on the left. So I'm going to get 4y minus sine of x quantity dy dx. So I just moved to the other side, right? Sine x dy, dy, dy dx. Now I'm just going to divide, and I will have matched what I was supposed to, and we're off and running. The reason they give you that in part A is that if you can't figure it out, you kind of can't do anything else. So they basically have to give you that, and then uh, you just verify it. So that's in case you're wondering why they do that. But they want you to be able to answer B and C. Um, so let's see what B has to say. Write an equation for the line tangent to the curve at the point 0, root 3. Well, at this point, I realize I actually need dy dx again. So this is the dy dx that we found or that they gave us. I need to evaluate this at 0, root 3. Where, like, the root 3 had me, like, I was like, am I going to have to plug that into a trig function? That's the y value. It's not the x value. So here, we're going to get root 3 cosine of 0. You do have to, you have to remember some unit circle values here, especially the quadrantals. Make sure you go over those a couple times before the exam. Cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. So this is just root 3 over 4 root 3, which is 1 fourth. And now we need to write our tangent line. So the tangent line is going to be point slope form all the time unless something happens and they make you do it another way. y minus root 3 is 1 fourth. The quantity x minus 0. There you go. Good problem so far, right? Use implicit. Write a tangent line. Let's look at the next one. Um, for 0 to pi inclusive and y greater than 0, find the coordinates of the point where the line tangent to the curve is horizontal. This has historically been on the test many times. If you go back in the archives, you will find a lot of them like this. Um, horizontal tangent line means dy dx should be equal to 0, right? So if dy dx equals 0, that means basically the numerator of this thing must be 0. Simultaneously, the denominator should not be 0, but you've never had to worry about that on the exam. Um, so if this is true, then either y is equal to 0 or cosine of x is equal to 0. And remember, we're between 0 and pi. Also remember that y is greater than 0. So y is greater than 0 means y can equal 0. Cosine is equal to 0 at pi over 2. Again, the quadrantals. you got to know your quadrantals going into this thing, um, or you might be in a little bit of trouble. So take the time and review them. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so pi over 2 is the only value between 0 and pi where that happens. Um, and this we can cancel because uh, y has to be greater than 0. So we know the x-coordinate. Where do we get the y-coordinate? Well, we know the derivative, but we also knew the original relation. So let's go to that. So we have when x is pi over 2, the original relation becomes 2y squared minus 6 equals y times the sine of pi over 2. Again, quadrantals. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. So 2y squared minus 6 equals y. Now we got to solve a quadratic equation. Like, what is going on? Um, I'm going to factor. So 2y and then y. I can't think of a time you ever had to use a quadratic formula on the AP exam. It may exist, but I don't... Not, not since like 2000-something. I know that. Um, so what do I need here? I'm going to go with plus 3 and minus 2, I guess. Right? That'll give me minus 4y plus 3y. So yes, that's good. Equals 0. Also, you can always use the quadratic formula. I'm just saying, like, I prefer to factor. Um, and I think most things are factorable when you get to this point. So 
Either y is negative 3 halves or y is 2. But again, y is greater than 0. That's doing a lot of work. So y is greater than 0. Therefore, our y coordinate is definitely 2. And our ordered pair is definitely pi over 2, comma, 2. That's the only point that satisfies this. They told you, it says find the coordinates of the point where the line tangent is horizontal. So you knew there was only one. You, if you forgot that, you had to go back and find the reason for it. And it's because y is greater than 0. All right, part D. Determine whether f has a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither at the point found in part c. All right. The only way I can think to do this is to use uh, the second derivative test, right? Because we already know that the first derivative is 0. If we can find the, the sign of the second derivative, we'll know if we're at a max or a min. So I'm going to find the second derivative. It's kind of gross. I want there to be a better way to do this, but I don't think there is. So the second derivative is... So we're doing uh, the quotient rule because it's a quotient, and then the derivative of y, don't forget, is dy dx. So we're doing like everything here. Bottom, 4y minus sine of x. Derivative of the top, so it's a product, so we need the product rule. First is y, derivative of the second is negative sine, so I'm going to write negative y sine of x. Plus second, which is cosine, derivative of the first is dy dx. All right, so that's bottom derivative of the top minus the top, which is y cosine of x. Derivative of the bottom. Derivative of the bottom is 4 dy dx and then minus cosine of x. All right, all of this is over the bottom squared. So 4y minus sine of x squared. Quantity squared, I should say. All right, so what do we know? We are going to try to find this at the ordered pair, which was pi over 2 comma 2. We know that at pi over 2 comma 2, dy dx is 0. So we're subbing those three values into this. If we do that and we do it right, well, hopefully, we'll get the second derivative is uh, 4 times 2 is 8, and then the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that's 8 minus 1. Now, when we plug in here, we get uh, negative 2 times the sine of pi over 2. Negative 2 times the sine of pi over 2 is uh, sine of pi over 2 is 1. So negative 2 times 1 is 1 dy dx is 0, so the cosine of x dy dx just disappears. It's gone. Um, and then the next one, the cosine of 0, uh, pi, sorry, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So all of this will 0. You get 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 times anything is 0, so that all becomes 0. The denominator is, it's really just the 8 minus 1 again, so 8 minus 1, and then the quantity squared. So this will give us Negative 14 over 49, which you could simplify to negative 2 sevenths, but you don't need to. And the key feature of this is that it's negative, right? That is less than 0. So I am ready to say that at the point pi over 2, 2, dy dx is equal to 0. The second derivative is less than 0. And therefore, uh, we can say that y has a relative maximum, right? Because it's concave down and has a horizontal tangent line, that is the second derivative test. So maybe I should have written by the second derivative test, but I didn't. Um, it's probably better to do that. So you should probably do that. Do, do as I say, not as I do, right? Or something like that. All right, that is question number five, implicit differentiation. Good, straightforward problem, I think. Second derivative is a little crazy to find, um, but we did it. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.